Hi everyone, thank you for watching this video tutorial. Before we begin, it is very important that you adjust your settings at the bottom right hand corner of your video player to play this video in high definition, preferably at 1080p HD. If that option is not available, please set it to play at the highest resolution that your connection will allow. Without high definition enabled, the signals in this video may not be able to be distinguished. Today we are going to go over the basics of reading a Bartonella culture fish smear. I hope you find the information useful. As a reminder, at this point in time, the ID fish Bartonella genus test kit is still for research use only and is not yet approved for clinical diagnostic use. To begin, you must ensure that you have the proper setup. For this test, we use a 100x oil immersion objective. You should make sure that you have an LED fluorescent unit with custom filters and that both of the power switches are turned on. You should also check to see that the slider is set to the correct filter. Having it set to the blue filter will ensure that you will see a green excitation when looking through the eyepieces. For optimum results, we recommend checking to see that your samples are no more than two years old. You can read a single smear slide or a double smear slide, whichever is more convenient. The smear should be made according to the instructions in the product insert that is included with the reagents. In this video tutorial, we are going to be looking at a Bartonella Hensley culture smear that was prepared by spiking culture media into whole blood. Now I will show you examples of what to look for in a positive sample. I also want to give some examples of artifacts versus true signals. I will denote the true signals with green circles and the artifacts or anything else indistinguishable in red. In addition, I want to point out that because the culture was simply spiked in equal parts with whole blood, the red blood cells and the bacteria are frequently on different planes of view. This is why the bacteria are usually in focus when the RBCs are not. It is therefore essential to be constantly fine focusing in and out across each field, like so, to make sure that all the layers are checked. Had this been a clinical sample, it is possible that the field might look different due to the fact that the pathogen and the blood might be more integrated with each other. Here you can see a cluster of cells in the left hand corner. Note the difference between what that looks like and what a dotty artifact looks like. Also note that because the culture was spiked, this smear has a very sparse layer of red blood cells. As you are scanning, it is important to keep in mind the morphology of Bartonella. In this case, it is fairly easy to tell that the true signals are in the form of rods that can sometimes be slightly curved. Since this is a culture, we can find a few clusters of rods like this that happen to stay together. Keep in mind that you will most likely not find clusters like this when scanning a clinical sample. Note again how important it is to use the fine focus to look at different planes in each field. Okay, well that is it for this tutorial. I hope that you have a better understanding of what the target signal should look like and can apply this information to your samples. If this video did not address the problems that you may be experiencing, please do not hesitate to call or email us with your specific questions. We will do our very best to help you troubleshoot and if necessary, can arrange a training. Thank you for watching.